Good afternoon. Welcome once again to Friendship Moments with Friendship Baptist Church in Killen, Alabama. Let's start out with a word of prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your presence with us today. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us a promise never to leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for Jesus, for his sacrifice for us, Lord, so that we could spend eternity in heaven with you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to reach out to people that we don't even know and perhaps, Lord, encourage them or strengthen their faith or bring them to see what a wonderful, magnificent Savior you are and, Lord, to help them to escape the wrath to come. We just give you praise and glory for your Holy Spirit that's within us, and we ask you, Lord, now that we would all open ourselves to him and allow him to teach us, our holy teacher, what you have in your work for us today. Thank you for hearing and answering prayer in Christ's name. Amen. I want to talk to you today on the subject of your adversary is defeated. In the 1972 movie, A Thief in the Night, a young girl accepts Jesus as her savior. She's given some instruction by her new Christian friends. They tell her that opposition would come through some of her friends and family and that Satan would try to get her discouraged, depressed, and to go back to her old manner of life. Jesus says in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. They then tell her to talk to Jesus often and tell him everything because through him all the forces of heaven are ready to help her. This is great advice and helps us to realize that we are in spiritual warfare. In Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, Paul instructs us on our armor. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the rulers, uh, the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. God's word is truth. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness, Jesus is our righteousness. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that wherever we go, we can speak of Jesus' sacrifice so that others may have the peace of God and peace with God. In addition to all taking up the shield of faith and knowing that we are in Jesus, he will take care of us, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation. Our thoughts are protected by our salvation through Jesus if we will take the time to listen to his spirit and the sword of the spirit the Word of God. We have to know the Word of God. 1 Peter 4, 8 warns us, Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. It says seeking, seeking someone to devour. If you, we have been diligent to obey God as he speaks to us in the verses we just read, we will be safe. There are many verses describing Satan and his demons, but one thing we must always remember, as Jesus says to the Jewish elites in John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil. There is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of all lies. Deception and lies are the only weapons Satan can use against God's children. He can't force us to do anything. Also, Satan is only a being who was created by God. Therefore, his power and strength are subject to God. Although, as Jesus says in John 14, 13, Satan is the God of this world system, he's powerless against Jesus. 
this is what that verse says. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me. Some facts about our adversary. As we have said, he's a liar, yet because Adam gave over his dominion of the earth to Satan in the garden, Satan is free to influence people and cause mayhem. Since he is a created being, he's not omnipotent, all-powerful. He is not omniscient, all-knowing, nor is he omnipresent everywhere at all times, as God is with all of these. He can't read your thoughts, but he does observe people. Because he is limited, he must depend on his hordes of demons or devils to do his work and to keep him informed. Most of us are not important enough for Satan to attend to us personally. So now let's take a quick look at our adversary and some of his schemes. I am indebted to Don Stewart of EducatingOurWorld.com for a very good teaching on this subject. The term Satan is used 52 times in scripture and means adversary and accuser. Revelation 12:10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, he who accuses them before our God day and night. He's called a devil, meaning the chief evil spirit. In Matthew 4, 1, it says that Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Another name used is tempter, meaning one who entices. Matthew 4, 3 says, and the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. He is the ruler of demons, Matthew 9, 34. But the Pharisees were saying he cast out the demons by the ruler of the demons. Beelzebul, meaning Lord of the Flies, is the name used in Matthew 12, 24. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, This man cast out demons only by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. He is our enemy. Matthew 13, 39 makes it clear, and the enemy who sowed them, or the seeds in the farmer's field, is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. He has always been a murderer, according to John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. This is not a full list. I recommend you learn of the authority and power available to you through God's Holy Spirit. But do not focus on the evil spirits. Jesus is to always be your focus. These are only tools that he gave us to use when we need them. And do not fall into the trap many have encountered. Not everything bad comes from evil spirits. God gave man a will, and often that will is contrary to God's will. And people suffer from the choices they and others make. Also, we live in a world that is deteriorating due to sin and will continue to fall until Jesus comes to redeem the earth as well as those who believe in him. A lot of what we suffer comes from just a world in chaos. Always remember Jesus' promises. And of course, there are a lot of them, but I'm just going to give you two or three. John 16, 33. These things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Hebrews 13, 5b. Jesus has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Take time, oh, I'm sorry, Matthew 28, 20, and behold, I'm always with you to the end of the age. Take time to look for his presence with you. As Brother Andrew said, practice the presence of God. Blessings. <laughs>